the, we're going to turn now to Ellen. And uh, Ellen, uh, we're going to ask you, how do you, as an activist, see the declaration and this bill being useful to you in your work and your struggles? Do you see using this human rights framework as critical to the lives of people? Um, Mark, uh, thank you everybody for this invitation. Thank you, Mary, for, for the prayer and, and Mark for your kind and generous remarks earlier. Uh, it is an honor for me as well to have been invited and it's an honor for me to speak with Cheryl, uh, who I have the uh, highest regard and respect for. And I thank you for your presentation, Cheryl, and for to be with uh, Willy Little Child on this panel as well, who uh, I've learned so much from over these years and watched him uh, as a TRC commissioner. Um, I didn't know we were going to start off with a question, so I had something planned else planned to, to say. So I, I just want to say that as, as someone who, um, I guess every Indigenous person has experienced this systemic discrimination, racism, and we have within our DNA this, this uh, resilient resistancy to colonization. And so this bill, I think, is something that I think this guy would have been happy about. This guy was the Cayuga chief uh, who was mocked by countries, <coughs> Great Britain, Canada, the US. Um, and to continue his work uh, as an indigenous person, as a human being, because this is what we're talking about. We're talking about human beings. And we're talking about our inherent rights, rights that were given to us long before any Europeans dipped their toe on this, these beautiful continents of the Americas. It has been so difficult for indigenous people to get anywhere with a government. Uh, every time there's an election, you know, they come in and they decide that they're going to unilaterally decide how to interpret the laws that apply to Indigenous people, they're going to unilaterally decide who is an Indigenous person. They're going to decide for us what we should do with our lives. And Indigenous people have been saying for centuries, we are human beings. We don't need you to tell us who we are. We have been telling you that you accept us for who we are. You accept us as human beings. You accept us as people who helped you to survive here on this continent. You came from a land that you were destroying. You came from that land where women were held in the lowest regard as chattel. And you came here and we showed you how to live on this land. And what did you do? In, in, in retaliation or in, in return was you treated our people to something that you call genocide. That is what we have been living. That is what Canada has done. Not cultural genocide, genocide. You tried to get rid of us and when you couldn't get rid of us, you decided to create laws that would defeat us. So here is a law that we can use for you to finally show as descendants of those first people who came here a little ounce of gratitude to the people that helped you survive and upon the backs and the bloods of the indigenous people for whom you have stolen the land from. And you continue to steal the land from. So what we have here today is a piece of legislation that says, finally, you see us. You see us. We are here. We're not going anywhere. 
we are staying here. And we are going to continue to reject your interpretation and your view of what our rights should be. We're going to get you to put into place something that will bring honor back to this country. Because this, at this point in time, there is no honor. There is very little honor. An Indigenous Languages Act that still continues to have the Treasury Board's head, uh, feet on our heads. We have lost so many speakers in this pandemic and we have lost, we've lost another speaker in my community just recently. With them goes the understanding of that cosmology from the very beginning of who we identify as a Guanghua people. The government has failed in the Indigenous Languages Act. It always comes down to what is it at cost? How much is it going to cost in gold bars? This is something that costs nothing except a change in your mind. This is something that will bring peace to what we have been searching for as well. As a, as a Haudenosaunee person, I can tell you that we continue to push back against the colonially imposed band council system that has used our people to divide and conquer our people. And while the government is saying these people cannot agree, we're gonna to continue to take their land and we'll negotiate later how much we're going to pay you for your land. Well, we are women. That is our laws, indigenous people's laws. It's about time that Canada started respecting us as human beings and our laws. What can you do for us? You get the government to respect indigenous laws. As a woman who has been on the front lines for three decades and who continues to be maligned and have my reputation smeared simply for standing up what my ancestors did, which is trying to protect the land from abuse. You are far from decolonizing Canada. You are far from it. I refuse to say the R word. I'll say the other R word, which is racism. This is a federal law that will finally, uh, at least, I think, as Cheryl mentioned, there's a three-year process. Anything's got to be better than the most racist piece of legislation in the, this planet, which is the Indian Act. Is that what we really want to continue perpetuating is the Indian Act that says, Indigenous women have no voice until Indigenous women rose up in strong numbers and said, me and my family deserve rights. Well, the women of the Haudenosaunee, we are saying we are going to protect our land as the women out west have in protecting the lands from pipelines. The UN has said, we have six years to change things and then it's devastation. And the Hopi elder, the late Thomas Banyanka, warned the UN long time ago, and he was scoffed at because he's just an indigenous man. We don't know anything. We're just a bunch of drunken, lazy Indians. Oh, and we like to worship trees, and, and, and we, oh, we love the land. We love the land. We are people of this land. Our, our, our ancient DNA that resides within us comes from the land, the air that, and, and the, the plants and the medicine. That is who we are as Indigenous people. No piece of legislation can change that. What we want you to do as citizens of your country is to bring back honor and say, we do recognize and respect Indigenous peoples as human beings. This is what we've been talking about. Those of you who listened to the news heard about Joyce Ashakwan, who died in a hospital and she didn't have to die. And her nation came up with Joyce's principles. 
And the premier of Quebec said systemic racism doesn't, doesn't exist in Quebec. So we're not gonna implement Joyce's principles. It's just like Jordan's principles. Same idea. See us, do you see us as human beings? If you don't see us as human beings, there's something innately wrong with you. We're talking about legislation that can improve the lives of indigenous peoples, that can improve the state of the environment. Cultural, spiritual, land rights, we're addressing colonization and decolonizing. We cannot do that just simply because the churches are supporting us or there's NGOs that are supporting us. You have to hold the politicians' feet to the fire because they have treated us as disposable. I am tired of being treated as disposable. Isn't it time you started treating us as human beings and not something for this industry upon which there's another fund to, to, to get money for, to do things? Can't we not do something just because we know it's right? This should not cost anything. This should be a no-brainer for people to understand that a declaration in which the states and indigenous people worked on for 20 years and is now a consensus document at the United Nations is worth putting forward. Because, you know, Justin Trudeau has failed every single promise that he has made since he's been in office. What is scarier is the other side, you know? And I, and I think that we saw that with Stephen Harper. He, had, he did not hesitate to trample over us the big omnibus bill that he passed. The Liberals didn't change that. That still stands today. All those things that he changed, that's still there. We need something. We really, really need a win. Because during this pandemic, theft of Indigenous land has continued the theft of our land. It's not just land dispossession, it's outright thievery, debauchery, depravity that treats us as if we are disposable. And we are telling you we are not disposable. We do not accept your interpretation of who we are. We will not stand for it anymore. And if you cannot push your weight behind this legislation, then there's something wrong with this country. And then we will continue to feel and we will watch from the outside as we have been for centuries watching what's going on, watching as outsiders on our homelands. The UN Declaration is not perfect. This is not a perfect piece of legislation, but it can be. We can make it better simply by changing the minds and the hearts of the people who you put in office changing the hearts and the minds of the people who teach your young and in post-secondary institutions to understand it's not UNDRIP, it's the UN DRIP, the United Nations Declaration. It's not something that's undoing anything. As Cheryl said, this is not creating any new rights. These are rights we do not need Canada's permission for. But Canada has been brutal in saying that, oh yeah, you know what? We're going to just take what we want anyways, just like the Europeans did and just like the psychopathic killers who came here on the boats in 1492. We need your help. We need to push something forward because I can tell you honestly, we are not getting anywhere. We are not improving our situation. We need to have something that is better than the Indian Act. We need for children to be able to have access to their lands and to use their language of the land and to use their cultural rights and pick their medicines from those lands instead of having to negotiate on something that is a rights recognition, which is just another way of assimilation. It's just repackaging colonization. What Canada is working on right now with Minister Bennett and Minister Miller is all BS. It means nothing. Because at the end of the day, you are not recognizing us as human beings. You see us 
as what kind of economy that you can get out of us. And I'm fed up with that. I'm fed up. And I think every indigenous person and any person who has an ounce of humanity in them should be fed up as well. What can you do? Shouldn't have to be always us to tell you what to do. You have created this forum for us to, to start talking and it should not be the end of that. It should not be the end. I'm getting older um, and I'm, 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 I'm not sure if I'm getting wiser, but um, I can tell you that I will continue to do this kind of work and, I'm, and I know that sometimes I'm too forceful but walk one day in my shoes and you will understand where I am coming from. Just one day, that's all I ask. Um, this is about relationship. This is about telling our stories and reclaiming who we are as human beings. And if you cannot even recognize us as human beings or having human rights to our, and rights to self-determination and everything that it encompasses, then I think we are lost and we will continue to be lost. And the next generation of young people who are more open-minded, they will be the solution and they are the leaders to becoming and will take the place of the old mind and the old school mindset. Um, we as women need to stick together, but we as Haudenosaunee women want our rights respected. And when we talk about redress and we talk about rights to land, the women have to be there equally, not just one woman in a room of 50 men, but the women, the women have to be there. And this band council system of hierarchy that you guys like to go to all the time, it's not working for us. And it's never worked for us. It's just, Indian Affairs rubber stamping it and we are still Indians under the Indian Act. I want you to understand that we are not indigenous people. There's not an indigenous act. My band card says Indian status. So don't forget that. There's a lot of changes that need to be made and a lot of work that you guys got to do because we've been doing the work too. I want to thank people like my good friend Jennifer Preston um, and Paul Joff who have taught me so much about the UN system and, and um, laws and policies. I know I think I've talked too long, but um, uh, I value that kind of allyship and friendship in, in my life because it kind of gets lonely on the front line sometimes. So thank you for listening to me.